I am here today to uh, talk about treating late-stage patients with lipolipidema, but it's really particularly about Miss Laura Baker. Who knows Laura? You guys know Laura at all? She's a board member, and Laura came to the facility. Oh, I have no financial disclosures, everyone. She came to see me, and she came for lymphedema treatment. There is a plethora of evidence and journal articles and physicians involved in obesity-induced lymphedema. And that video that I was showing you, and it is on YouTube if you wanted to see it, talks about obesity-induced lymphedema. And you would think that in that video of physicians talking, you would think, you would hope that they would talk about lipedema or lipedema, tomato, tomato. You would think they would talk about it. And so Dr. Chang and Dr. Green in that video has pictures. And what do you think the pictures are of? Obesity-induced lymphedema. So that was the discussion in that video. And hence, the next slide is, really? Really? And that just surprised me. So that it was the, the reason for having that video. So now, when we have patients come to us, I am a therapist and I treat all different types of patients, and I work at Health South Scottsdale in a rehab facility. I work in inpatient therapy as well as outpatient. So, this is Miss Laura Baker. Watch these things happen in my body, knowing it wasn't right and nobody knew what to do. And I didn't know what to do. And if I didn't know then what I know now, I can tell you, I'd be tooting everybody's horn and saying, you need to talk to me now, I need you to listen, because this shouldn't happen to anybody. So I wanted you to see, that is Laura, and Laura has lipolymphedema. Laura was in Cottage Hospital in Santa Barbara. No one would take me because of my weight or they didn't have lymphedema therapy inpatient program because there are not many around. And what has occurred was she was in Southern California and she could not find someone to help her. Isn't that amazing? Laura was there, I think, and Laura can correct me on this, I think she was there for about four months with infection, and she would be there, and she did have a therapist in the acute setting to help her, but not looking at her over, overall well-being. So now we have another video. For this type of lymphedema, really the best treatment is to uh, get her into a care center and get her wrapped to reduce the fibrosis, to reduce the lymphedema. But unbelievably, there are almost no places in the United States, zero, where a person can go and get cared for. Whereas if you go to Germany, there are a number of different centers all across Germany that are set up to take care of people. Why don't we have that here in the United States? Why aren't we recognizing that this is different than obesity? So I heard Dr. Herbst, and we all know Dr. Herbst. So I took the opportunity, working at Hell South Scottsdale Rehab, because it's an inpatient rehab facility, that because I'm a lymphedema therapist, and we have this inpatient facility, 24-hour care with physical therapy and occupational therapy, and I, as a wound care and lymphedema therapist, why can't I 
and my facility meet that need. And fortunately, somehow, Laura was able to hear of me, and you could see that from Santa Barbara all the way to Scottsdale, Arizona, look at that distance, she took an ambulance ride, yeah, all the way to see me in Scottsdale. And so this is my facility where I work. In my facility, we have aquatic therapy, we have inpatient therapy, which includes physical therapy, occupational therapy, respiratory therapy, and wound care nurse, dietitian, and the rooms are set up with, Laura was helpful, in setting up a facility that would accommodate our patients who require inpatient need for that diagnosis. So based on HIPAA, our photographs that I'm going to show you are very revealing. Laura, you are marvelous to share this with us, and I thank you. What is Laura? Who is Laura? We're all talking about Laura. And it's, she is brilliant, she is magnificent, and she is superb. Laura. Okay, we will be talking about Laura today. Laura Baker, look at that beautiful smile. So, here is Laura on admission. Now, this is very revealing, but if you take a look, look at Laura anteriorly. This is her thigh, her tummy, you see her, actually that's her panis, and here's the back of her. That's profound, wouldn't you say? And what would somebody say ordinarily to see Laura like this? You're fat. What else? Gastric bypass. But, you know, we can help. But it has to be in a way, like Dr. Herbst said, in a collaborative way with people who are understanding of the condition. So, our therapists today, as well as many physicians, really take a look at a situation. They don't look, by and large, at a management of multimorbidities or comorbidities. And when I assess a patient or my team assesses a patient with lipolymphedema or severe or profound primary or secondary lymphedema, we're looking not only at the physical issues, but the mental health issues and other issues. How many of you say that you have pain in your knees and that you can't walk? That doesn't mean you're lazy, you've got pain. And so we look at all these issues to help with quality of life. And we're looking at drug interactions such as ibuprofen. And again, I am not an MD. And if the MD's in the room, if you can help me. I believe Laura was on ibuprofen. And they took her off of ibuprofen because that adds to swelling. And they put her on ketoprofen. And they were looking at medically managing her thyroid and diabetes and her uh, levels while they diuresed her. So it really is clinical management with the physician and the therapist and the dietitian and all the other team members. So when we talk of multimorbidity, I, we were looking at her any lymphedema, her BMI, hypertension, arthritis, uh, depression, uh, recent cellulitis and sepsis, because Laura was hospitalized initially with that. And her chronic debility, couldn't get out of her room. She was in, if I recall, she was in her room in her home for five years. Uh, and fluid overload and chronic venous insufficiency. So our treatment team at HealthSouth Scottsdale was internal medicine, 
We had a physiatrist, phys physical medicine rehab, lymphedema therapist, nursing, OT, PT, respiratory therapist, dietitian, and the pharmacist working on managing all those comorbidities. So of course, when my assessment, since this is a case study, we looked at her previous treatments, and what is so important, I know Dr. McMahon is in here, and she was one very helpful to teach me the stages of change assessment, and we'll review that briefly. Her goals, what is her volume, what is her weight, what is her skin? Like Dr. Herb said, what is her skin like? And pain, and also what is her uh, functional performance of her body, her arms, her legs, her transfers. So stages of change, and I, I do want to briefly review this, because this to me is one of the most profound assessment tools for patients with lipolymphedema, and that is to assess the stage of change. Because from there, I can intervene and help facilitate that. What do I mean by changes, the stages? Pre-contemplation is, you know you have a problem, right? But you're just not sure if you're ready. But you know there's something there that you got to do. So to say you're going to come in for an inpatient rehab, but you're scared, you're not sure, that's not perhaps not where you need to be. Maybe you need to do more education and learn and see what's needed. Or contemplation. You know, I'm thinking about intensive therapy. I've got to do some more research, but I'm going to reach out to some rehab centers. I'm going to reach out to my insurance company to see if it's covered. Preparation. All righty. I am ready. My insurance says that they would cover it. Now I'm going to see which facilities will take me and will my family help me? Do I have transportation? What will I need? do right now because I'm prepared to enter intense treatment and then action. I'm ready. So Laura was ready. And all she had to say to me is, all righty, I'm here. What can we do? I don't care how much effort it is. I'm ready to do it. Bring it on. I'm ready. And then, of course, is the maintenance phase. I've done it. I'm ready. Now, what all do I need to do to manage this? So there is no judgment here because it is what it is. If you're in pre-contemplation, we embrace that and see how we can facilitate getting you to the next stage and the next stage. So that's where there's your head and your heart has to be in the same space to know what it is that you need to do. I'm taking how Laura comes to me, my experience, and taking the research, putting it all together, because music is so great, right? And we were gonna, we're gonna make music together, Laura and I. And that's what we did. So here it is. Now, this is interesting. When I was working with Laura, now Laura was uh, a large woman, but our boss, now here's this, even though I have an understanding of this, she said, Andrea, you have 40 years experience. You could treat Laura on your own. But the therapist who had one year experience, oh, you need help, right? 400 pounds, it's 400 pounds. I had to lift Laura up myself. But that didn't stop me. So I would take each limb, you see, I would wrap her, that's one leg, and then I would wrap the other leg. But then she had her panis, right, that was coming way down her thighs. But as you know, when we have inguinal lymph nodes and there's lots of pressure there, it will back up like a little dam. So we had to lift up 
herpanis. So as you can see, I, and I had to use supplies that we were available. So I used two um, abdominal binders and Dysum. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Dysum, are you? It's like shelf liner, that it, it's a little bit um, sticky, but it has antimicrobial properties, and it's silicone, so it won't affect her skin, but it helps from things falling down. So she would wear her binder 24-7. So then, how do I keep her tummy off There it is. This is for Laura, because we just used to sing all the time, okay? We had to make a makeshift lifter. So I used gate belts and a sheet and pulled it up so all night long her tummy would lift. And then you'll see that I had um, these releases the ratchets right there so it was not considered a restraint laura could take it off anytime she wanted because believe me she would pee like you wouldn't believe okay love you laura okay so then you could see now we're lifting up the tummy now you're not seeing me do a whole lot of mld right now because it was too hard too large, and the gold standard is compression. I needed it to get down and get that layer of swelling. So look at Laura, could you believe this? That's why I was saying, in terms of the stages of change, she was ready for action. Because really, if you're in contemplation stage, do you really think you'd do that? No, I don't blame you, but she wanted it. So you could see her tummy is lifted, and she has bandages everywhere, okay? So that's what we did here. So then, look at this. She reduced in her legs, okay? But her width by her buttock, as you saw her initial picture, was quite large. So we had to say, the binders help with the Panis, but what are we going to do for her width? So there we are. We made a burrito. <laughs> yeah, this is therapeutic use of self, guys. This is Andrea knowing the science of compression, figuring out what is it that we need to do. So there we go. Look at the, whoop, 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 no, no, don't go yet. Okay, see that? There's the burrito. So what we had was we took sheets. She took one side, I took another. Now remember, it's just Andrea because I have all this experience. I don't have a helper. And I had Laura who was a tremendous helper. And we made a burrito out of this so that as she went from here, then she reduced. So what we then did was she was ready with her legs down and her width to get a garment. Okay, so here is her purple suit. Okay, she was Barney and we would be singing. Okay, so now with this Barney suit, let me show you something. This before I put her in the um, burrito, this was measured prior burrito. Would you believe it? And then, after being a Barney, right, we got her remeasured. She chose her favorite color. And look at, isn't that cute? We were laughing like crazy. So she then was fitted for a custom garment. Now, we, I did not say, okay, Mr. Garment Man, you make it for her. No. What we did was, Laura, how do you use and how is it best for you to pull it up? How do you, where do you want it? Where would you like zippers? What do you need to make yourself successful with this garment at home? So she was the one 
to create the garment and the strategies behind it to the garment fitter. Because he is not in charge, Laura is. And look at her now. How beautiful is that? So what we did was she not only, she chose a capri with separate lower extremity garments. So you could see, can you see the difference? I mean, I, we, had, we were blessed. We were given three months. So every day, we would plan with our nursing staff when she would shower, when she would have skin care, when she would have physical therapy, and so forth. But she received m complex lymphatic therapy, or at least MLD, and uh, compression, a minimum of two to three hours a day, and then some other work. So take a look. You will see that she really did drop some weight, and she did drop some inches. Look at that difference. I think that's profound, don't you? Now, we're still in an obesity mindset in many of our physicians. Would you agree? Yeah. We're also in a mindset of diuretics. Wouldn't you agree? We're also in a mindset of elevation. Wouldn't you agree? OK. So Laura wanted me to make sure that you know, and I'm sure you do, that it's not just not about weight. However, the insurance company doesn't understand some of that. So you could see here that we made a graph of her weight loss as we went from admission all the way down to discharge. All righty. So that is not the only criteria but it's one that they understood. Now, we also had um, a poster made up as we have all different patients come to our facility and those with really profound stories, we um, share their story on the wall in our office. So Laura's story was that coming here saved my life. From, in terms of function, Laura indicated that she was in her room for five years. By the time she then went to Cottage Hospital and then transferred to Hell South Scottsdale, by that time, we were able, I even remember the experience of when she was able to roll onto her side for the first time. That she can move in bed for the first time like that. That she can get up and move around and be independent that way. And then we got her a motorized scooter fitted for her so that she can come out of her room. Now, sadly to say, not because we didn't want to, but poor Laura was in her room at the hospital for two, for almost the three months, because we tried various wheelchairs, various transporters for her, for her weight and for her girth, but we could not find any. Until she, at the end of the three months, got small enough that we could get her her own scooter, and then she was able to go in and out of the um, uh, her room. We also have a, a pool, but because she had an open wound, we could not get her in the pool. But what we did learn is we need to get a chair that lets people in and out that's greater than 350 pounds, of which we are working on that thanks to her. So Laura, in terms of our case study, I want the most important points for you to, sit, to note is the stage of change. When that patient comes to have inpatient rehab or to have a crazy therapist like myself who pulls all different things to meet your needs, that you are ready for it. 
and to know that it is challenging and there are times of breakdown, there are times of being overwhelmed, but we can do it. So not only did we take care of Laura, but we also, just to give you an idea that, we also took care of a gentleman who had uh, a tumor in his pelvis and his testicles, and his scrotum was down to the floor. And we did same as we did with Laura. Team approach, what did the patient want to do, and we were able to help him as well. So it really is important that when you look at a clinic for intensive work, you really have to ask when you're in your preparation phase, what factors do they have? Now granted, we're still looking at bariatric, that is the word that they understand, but it is your larger weight. Can you get in and out? What is the weight? What uh, of the room weight capacity if it's more than one floor? Is the bathroom door large enough? Is the shower large enough? What is the sensitivity of staff? Do you really want staff to say, oh, look at that person, or treat you with that disrespect? And you, how many of you felt some disrespect as you go along your day or in medical care? I see a lot of nods. Look at that, and hands thrown up in the air, yeah. So we have to make sure there's sensitivity and respect, and we have to make sure staff is educated, we have to make sure there's enough room, and what I've learned and what Laura taught us also was, um, let me go back for a moment, was also the air conditioning. How hot do you guys get? Hot. We had to have fans in there, and because air conditionings are usually contained by a central area, we had to and have to make allowances for individual use of the room to keep it cool for her. Because frankly, you saw how wrapped she was. I mean, with hot flashes and hot, that's hot. So uh, we have to make sure of that. So I wanted to make sure that in preparation stage, you know what to look for. So we don't have many of these um, facilities in the US. And I just wanted you to know that with your help and this organization and patients like Laura willing to be in an action mode, you can make a difference by touching base with different facilities or health rehab centers and say, do you have a therapist that can do this? And then you could always use, you could be a market differentiator, the real buzzword to say, you can be different and you can get some referrals and you can make a difference. So, so the next slide I'd like to show you is another case of lipolymphedema. Here's a woman who had lipolymphedema for five years. And what do you think doctors said for her to take care of herself? Come on, yell it out. Lose weight, what else? Exercise, what else? Compression, yeah. Could you imagine getting compression on that leg? Right? Oh, by the way, I just wanted to tell you one other thing about Laura. Another thing we did, which is a faux pas, but I didn't have a problem with it. We decided to try it. She had her, uh, an advanced compression system on her one leg, sometimes all night long, because it also compressed her belly. So we also used all different strategies to help because there is no recipe. We just assessed what she needed. So this individual feigned a fall at the corner of the hospital that I worked at. Went into ER, the ambulance took her there, and you know what they said. Elevate, diuretics, antibiotic, get compression. And she said, I'm not going anywhere. I want Andrea to see me in lymphedema. They go, we don't have an Andrea, and we don't have, there's no lymphedema around here. I worked there for many, many years, and ER did not know this. So I went in, she was in Trendelenburg, which means the doctors and the nurses put her head down here and legs up here, like 
take a jar of peanut butter and turn it upside down. Is that really going to come out? No. So here she is like this, and I look at her. I lifted up the sheets, and I said, what are you willing to do? And she, what do you think she said? Anything. What change, what stage of change is she in? She's ready, she's active, let's do it. And then I did treat her. Now, she went from this to this, all righty? And every April, she sends a save, you've saved my life card. And um, anyway, isn't, it's really something. So with that, I finished the formal presentation.